Well, let's go to Saskatoon now and bring in the head coach of the Saskatoon Blades, Mitch Love. Right on schedule here this morning. Coach Love uh, joining us from his office at SaskTel Center. I see. How you doing, Mitch? Good, guys. Good morning. How you doing? Yeah, it's good. Good to talk to you. I see you got the Hockey Canada gear on, and we've already got questions coming in for you regarding Hockey Canada. So I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Um, I haven't chatted with you in a good long time. Um, how are preparations going for this January 8th start date from a Blades perspective? Well, first off, Rod, I just want to applaud you and and uh, and Darren there with the um, you, you know Clark Monroe. He, that guy is a detailed man there. The 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 itinerary I got for this call was was top notch. So if if uh, you're not paying him enough there, tell tell Clark he can come join us with the blades. We call him the Hound Dog, uh, by the way, because oh, yeah. Ron McLean <laughs> says he's a Hound Dog. You know what I'm saying. So there you go. You just got a huge eruption of applause from the dog pound back here, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. That's so, awesome. Are you, how's your schedule? Like, was it hard to fit in this interview this morning or, you know, are, you, are your guys around? What's life like? Uh, well, we just finished kind of our last Zoom call of, of the six month process that started back in April. Um, when, you know, when we, when we put this whole thing together and was there going to be a world juniors, wasn't there going to be a world junior event? Um, you know, so It'll be nice to see everybody uh, face to face or mask to mask, however you want to go with it. And, and here in a few days in Red Deer, when we kick this thing off and and get ourselves ready for our first game on the twenty sixth of the December. Well, we had Alan Miller on here uh, last week talking about splitting his time between Hockey Canada duties and Moose Jaw Warrior duties. How about yours with Hockey Canada versus Sask- Saskatoon Blades duties? He actually said it was kind of a welcome thing, keeping him busy. Uh, are you the same as that? Sorry, Rod. I didn't catch that last question there. I, I don't know. If are you? Uh, how are you here. split? How are you splitting you your go. time? How are you splitting your time between Hockey Canada duties and Blades duties? Well, I just uh, about a week ago, I completed my 14-day quarantine coming from the United States, so I had plenty of time to, uh, you know, really dive into you know preparing our staff here in Saskatoon for uh, our Western Hockey League season, which will start with a December 27th training camp. Um, you know, plenty of Zoom calls with our staff. There's been a few changes up here in terms of our coaching staff. Um, so it's been busy in that regard. And then obviously balancing our, our commitment level here with Hockey Canada and getting ready for the World Juniors. Um, but, you know, as a hockey coach and having this long, lengthy layoff, uh, no different than the players. We're just itching to get back at it and, and being busy is a, is a good thing this time here. Did you think you'd ever get the chance to coach Kirby Doc again? <laughs> Probably not. You know, when, when we didn't see him back here last year as an 18 year old, um, I, you know, and obviously this pandemic really hit everybody hard there in March, um, you know, which gave us an opportunity to have Kirby join us here with the world, world junior team. It's going to be exciting. You know, obviously we're, we're big fans of Kirby and watching his development over the last year here. Um, you know, this community, this organization and watching what he's done with the Chicago Blackhawks. Um, and now, you know, we get another chance to work with him here and, and uh, in pursuit of a gold medal. You know, obviously you have thoughts on the WHL Junior A tr- player transfers. Everybody's got some thoughts. Uh, your goalie's playing in Yorkton. Um, I've heard from a lot of the Junior A guys. I haven't heard from a lot of the dub guys. What's your take on that situation and this one in a, once-in-a-lifetime situation we're in? Well, a lot of times, you know, I try to put myself in the player's shoes. And, and um, you know, I, I think if I'm a young man that hasn't played a competitive hockey game, you know, since since March, um, and th- there's that option out there for them to, to join a Junior A team, uh, you know, across Western Canada, I, I, I can't blame them, you know. And, and I know there's been some teams in the junior A ranks that have, have been a, a big advocate and, and, and supporter of it, and then there's some that, that haven't been. But at the same time, that's their teams. Those are their teams. Um, nobody predicted this was going to be the, the scenario we were in, um, you know, with our push, uh, our start date being pushed back to, to December and January. So um, you, you got to play hockey. You got to get that, you know, that competitive edge back in your game. You got to have game reps. Uh, you can only do so many skill uh, drills uh, on, a, on a day-to-day basis uh, for, for eight months in an off season. So, you know what, uh, it's been kind of cool to watch some of our guys play Junior A and just see where their games are at and, and whatnot online. 
How much is this season starting in January, Mitch, going to change the way, you know, the season usually plays? Like, I'm trying to project, you know, what's going to happen, what the hockey's going to look like, you know, what teams might, you know, be at the top like we do every year. We saw it in baseball with the kind of the sprint that they had, right? And the Jays ended up doing really well in that. What changes from the hockey perspective as opposed to a normal season? Well, I think there's obviously going to be lots of, you know, COVID protocols that are going to be put in place by, you know, the health authorities and, and the Western Hockey League and the CHL. So, you know, of course, our organization has done a great job to this point of, you know, um, prepping us as much as they can on the information they have and what it's going to look like. Um, you know, I know our, our support staff here is going to be working their tails off to make sure this area is clean and, and doing our part and obviously educating our players on what that looks like. But at the same time, Darren, the one messaging that you know we've really been adamant with our guys uh, throughout the off season here when we really ramped up our zoom calls and starting in june uh with our mental performance coach was was trying to limit a little bit of that covid distraction as well i mean you know of course we got to be aware of it um we've got to support our athletes make sure their health and the number one priority no different than our fans here um but at the same time it, it's just going to be part of our life it's going to be part of the you know coming to the rink maybe a few minutes earlier to to do your testing um to make sure that we're safe when we come into this bubble environment here and and at, but at the same time if you're if you're a player or a staff member that's going to consume yourself with the negativity of where we're at in the world with covid it's gonna it's gonna you know it's gonna drag itself onto the ice and i think the team that's able to put those distractions aside and just kind of focus in on the hockey um i, I think will be the teams that will have the most success in whatever our season looks like uh in, in terms of a length and, and a, if, if there's playoffs and memorial cup unbelievable mitch and good for you for having a mental coach because i talked to so many nhl players that didn't have one in the bubble in the stanley cup playoffs one was made available to them by the nhl but very few of them took advantage of it and I got a million questions flooding me. I'm only going to ask you one more, Mitch, and then we're going to let you go. And hopefully we can bring you back here uh, in the next few weeks. Listen, you played in Moose Jaw, 99 to 02. Swift Current, you overlapped, right? 01 to 02. Mm -hmm. And then Everett. I was the voice of the Pats for 15 years. I know you really well. I never thought you'd be a coach. I thought you'd be out beating somebody up for a living. When did you flip that switch to say this is something I want to do. And, and congratulations on all the success, by the way. But what made you want to be a coach at the highest level? Thanks, Rod. I appreciate that. Um, you know what? Um, I think just as I furthered my career, whether it was through the Western League or, or into you know the, the minor pro ranks, um, I always had an interest in, in you know trying to lead lead my team or, or, or lead my peers and um, – I think when, when an opportunity presented itself in Everett uh, 10 years ago now, um, it was something I, you know, I had to take advantage of. Um, and I had a few health concerns as well and, and with, with some hip issues um, that led to it. But it's been a blessing in disguise. I, I enjoy coaching. I enjoy being around people. I love being around the players. Um, and you know what? It's, it's just a, a real pleasure to come to the rink every day and, and try to make these young men better and, and – uh, I truly love being a part of the Western Hockey League as well. Well, I really love the way you're doing it, with just with your attitude and the culture, and I know that the success is going to be there. Uh, Mitch, we're, we'll let you go, but thanks for this. I really appreciate the time, and, and like I said, I mean it. Hopefully we can do it again here real soon before you go to Edmonton. That sounds good. Thanks for having me on today, guys. You guys be safe out there. You too. Mitch Love joining us from his office at SAS Tell Center, the pride of Quinell, B.C., which is, I look at that, that's the home of Mitch the Wild Thing Shawara. He was a tough guy that we had in PA back in the day. It's on the highway to, highway to Prince George. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.